In this video, I'm going to be looking at the Wacom tablet I use in my workflow, how I've configured it with its settings, and show you a couple of examples, one in Photoshop and one in Luminar of it in use. A few videos back I mentioned that I used a tablet in my workflow and I think that's an essential part of any image editing workflow. It makes everything so much easier. Ergonomically it goes without question, I'd rather be drawing into my image than using a mouse to go over it like this. So you can see why that works. Quite a lot of people had contacted me and asked my, the settings that I use and how I use it in my workflow. So in this video I'm going to show you how I've configured my tablet. and what works best for me and again in my workflow. At the same time, I still use the mouse and I still use my keyboard shortcuts. So it's not a be all and end all. It's good to have the choice of the three and all three work in synergy when you're editing as well. So that's a, a good thing and it's a good thing to think about as well. As soon as you take a tablet, it doesn't mean everything else is out the window when it comes to editing. But it depends how you work. So without further ado, I'll dive right in. Okay, the tablet I'm using is the Intuos 4, the PTK640, it's the medium tablet and I've used this for many, many years now and I also have the other, a very old Wacom tablet but that's lasted me, I've had that since 2007 and that's lasted me as well so you can, the build quality and what they do, they it really, really last so that's a good thing with them. The next thing I'm going to show you is how my tablet is set up and my workflow. Okay, so this is a screen grab of the information screen that's brought up if you press the top settings button on the tablet and it does everything that it says there. The bottom four buttons, redo, control, pan, scroll and undo, that's the only customised buttons I have used on this tablet. Currently, as you know, this is a screen grab of what it does. So, if I go into my tablet and I choose information, this is what comes up. And you should be able to see that on this screen now. And now is when you can go into the pen properties. That should just appear down here. And I'll bring that up there. So that tells you the Wacom tablet pen properties. Intuos Medium 4 pen grip functions and applications it's set to use all the applications for the pen grip i've got the tip feel set to like three quarters again it's preferential it's totally up to you tilt sensitivity set to medium if i take the pen you should see the pressure there so the more pre the lighter i do it hardly any pressure the more i do it pressing down and these tips on the wacom pens are brilliant they'll last for ages and ages Moving on with the pen, we have a razor, which is up here. Again, you can change that. Hardly ever use it, so I don't bother changing it. And mapping. Mapping for this one, you'll notice that if you use a tablet, depending on what size you have, my surface area for the tablet is the entire area. I find that really, really useful. And as you see, if I go to the top left corner, where it is on the screen, and if I go to the bottom right corner, where it is down here. Now that's my workflow, I prefer that, but if I hardly want my hand to move, so that you don't, I suppose, get any stress within the RSI or anything, uh, you can actually change the tablet area. And how you do that is you get into portion, and then you can take this down in size. So that is really, really useful if you only want to move around a small section of the screen. But as again, as I say, sometimes when I am drawing or if I'm working within certain areas, I like the full sweep. And although you get that there and hardly any movement, it's just a preference. If I get into the functions, this is where I can reset any of these buttons. Again, that's on this tablet. And I could get into the modifier, as I say, the control I hardly use. So if I wanted to, I could get in and disable that. And that's just quite quickly going down and clicking disabled. I'm just going to leave that for now because every now and again, I do use it. The other things that it has within this is the touch ring, which is here. And as I said, you've got the toggle and which will take you through auto scroll, cycle layers, brush and rotate. And you can change these as well. These are all 
editable and the sensitivity of the outer ring is controlled here. So again, very handy, quick to set up, really, really quick to set up before you get into anything. But I would say it's better to try the tablet first and then go, okay, what ones am I gonna use the most? What am I going to be needing each time I reach for the tablet? That's the best way of doing this. If I go into the on-screen controls, the radio menu, which is here, and you can see that set up there. Again, I've left that as default because I hardly ever use it. So if I hardly ever use it, it's not worth going in and changing it. If it gets to the point where I'm editing and I want to change it all the time, I will. But currently I hardly ever use it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush and I still use my keyboard. My keyboard is still sitting directly beside the tablet. So if I want to use the brush shortcuts, I can use the brush shortcuts. If I feel like using Control and Z to undo, I can do that as well. But just, it's all sitting here on the tablet. It just depends how you're working and whether you're comfortable or not. So the first thing I'm going to do, you can see that my brush size is at 15 just now. If I go into my center button and I toggle through these, you can see that it changes. If I go into rotate and then just use the outer one, it rotates the entire document. And then for me to reset that, press R on the keyboard and reset view. That takes everything back round. Then I'm going to go into the brush and that's me in the brush size. I'm going to go B for brush and I'm going to take the brush size down. I'm going to work with different pressures here, so very lightly. And you can even get lighter than that. And then I'm going to put in some stronger, more pressure ones even there and the good thing about this this is what I love about the Wacom tablets or any tablets I've used Huion before and they were really good as well it was an on-screen one I had and that was really good I'd love to try the Wacom on screen for editing but that's out of the price range at the moment so that's how the pressure sensitivity works and it shows you that you can be very very light so if you can imagine using this for dodging and burning uh, in Photoshop or Lightroom and using it that way within Luminar I'm going to bring that up and show you how it can be used within that as well because Luminar currently doesn't support brush sensitivity but there's another thing with this tablet in particular that it allows you to do. So I'll show you that as well. So you can see there, the more pressure I add, the stronger and bolder the lines. The less pressure, the less the lines come in. Brush size, as you saw there, that was down at one pixel. That's me bigger in size, more pressure. So you can see the benefits of that without labouring this point. You can actually see the benefits of that. For me, the precision mode, if I zoom in, and I zoom in here, although it's pixel editing within this, if I go into precision mode, I can work within this area. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to go back to B for brush. And you'll notice as well the response. I'm actually moving my hand quite quick here, but the response is slower. And it's that now that you see is actually the entire tablet surface. And it's taken me a wee while to move around that, but the precision mode is really, really handy as well. If you're going in for fine details, this is pixel editing near enough, but if you're going in for fine details, you'll see what I mean. And I'm drawing with a pixel size of two here. And again, pressure works with it. And I'm putting a lot of pressure on that because I'm not worried about the tip of this and I can't work outside that so if I go there and I turn off precision mode and then I move about the screen and I go in here and I recheck precision mode if I want to move it slightly just hold down the space bar and I can move it around anywhere I want so hopefully you get the idea with that and you see how this can be utilized and how a tablet pen and tablet is really really worth the investment when it comes to editing. Okay, now that you can see we're in Luminar, this, I'll just show you what this image is. This is from a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. The sky's been replaced in this one, so that just goes to show you how good Luminar can work with sky replacement, even in mobile phone photography. So if I zoom in here, 
and just move it about the screen. I'm not going to make any adjustments. As you can see here, this is a mobile phone shot. You can see the high contrast and everything. But if I wanted to go in and edit some of the details in this using the tablet and perhaps bring out some of the details in the grass, dodge and burn the grass, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight into the professional tab and I'm going to get into dodge and burn. Right, there is nothing that you should know about this that you can't do without a pen. There is no pressure sensitivity with this currently. So it is just basically the ergonomics of it and how to work with it as well. And I'm just going to lighten the odd area in here. I'm not going to do anything drastic with it and I'm not going to take my time and edit it. I'm just going to show you how it works. So I now have the pen in use. So I'm going to go start painting. I am going to go in and take the strength right down because I like my subtleties unless it's in the sky and then I like drama in the sky. Uh, and that's in the lighting mode. If I click here and cycle through this, I go back to brush size. So within this, you can see the brush size is there. I can change the brush size using the scroll wheel. But not all tablets have that. So, but it's just to let you see pressure sensitivity, there is none. So I can go in and just pick out details in here. So you can see what I'm doing. You need to see the entire picture as well as working in a precise area just to make sure that what you're doing is working okay. So I'm going to do this and I'm just going to do this very, very roughly in here. You'll get the point of it anyway. So I'm just going to paint in there and I'm only painting in the lighter areas. And if you've seen the last video, you'll know what I was talking about, about when you're working precision wise, because I don't want to lighten, see I wanted to lighten that branch there. What that's going to do is it's also going to lighten the dark and darker areas in there. And those darker areas, in this case, because it's a mobile phone shot, contain a lot of noise. So I'm just creating even more in that. So I'm just going to lighten the odd area in here and then I'll zoom out just to see how it looks. And we'll do a before and after. I won't be too particular with this because what I want to do is just, this is mainly about the tablet and not about editing in any form at all. And I'm actually lighting, lightening areas here that shouldn't be lightened. Uh, so I'll do that and I'll leave it at that. So I'm going to zoom out, control zero or command zero on a Mac. And what I'm going to do is turn this on and off, just to let you see the difference. And that's just zoomed in, editing in a small area, it makes a massive difference. Right, with the precision mode, I'm going to look for an area, say for example here, so that your eyes drop down to there next. I'm not controlling where your eyes look, I'm just showing you this for example with the tablet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in now, and that's command and plus, and here and I'm going to move it down to here, just to see this area here. For me, precision mode. I can now move this around. Again, I am using the space bar, and if I have to go to my mouse, I'll go to my mouse to move it as well. It just depends on how you're working. And to be honest, it's actually quite easy to hold a mouse and a pen at the same time. So, so if I go in here, I'm just going to lighten that tiny wee area there. Again, I'm going to go up, start painting. I'm going to turn that off and then start painting again. Strength up here. I've now jumped to the mouse. I'm going to take the strength down again to around four, five, six. And this is not an editing video. And now that I'm back on the pen, I'm going to take my brush size down. And I am just going to paint in small areas. So this is how the precision mode works. And this is just for this tablet. There is lots of different ways of using it. Would I lighten and would I spend my time doing this? Not for this image. Other images, yes, but not for this one. I'm just using this as an example. And I could paint as heavy as I want. It's not going to make a difference. That's the one thing I'd like to stress. Please don't think it's going to make a difference in Luminar currently to put more pressure on the pen because it doesn't seem to be making a difference at all. That's possibly something they may work with in the future. So I'm just going to paint in there and then I'll put a couple of lines in here and you'll see them appearing. I'm working over them though. And I'll put one down here 
just so that you can see the difference. I'm going to make the brush a wee bit bigger so you can see why this is handy and why I would definitely recommend a tablet. For me, it's always been Wacom. I've had the Huey on, on screen tablet and I had to get rid of that unfortunately just because of desk space. So I'm going to leave it at that. So any tablet to start out with and then you'll find the one that you really, really enjoy. Again, I would say I would love to try the Wacom ones, but they're too expensive to try, to be honest. They look absolutely stunning. Okay, I'm going to turn off precision mode and I'm going to zoom out. Control and zero. So, if you can see where that was, brilliant. If you can't, you'll see it in a second. See the difference that makes? Hopefully you're looking down here. <laughs> uh, but see the difference that makes when working close in with the mouse so that's why I would highly recommend a tablet but at the same time as I've said don't be working in the one area then zoom out and then work in another area and zoom out always go back in and out to, to see where and how it's impacting on the rest of the image my eyes are now drawn down here now that I've done that Whereas I would now need to go in and lighten everything there. So the tablet itself is a great addition to your editing workflow. And the final thing that I would like to say about the tablet as well. It comes with a holder. Not all of them do, but once you start moving into the different types of tablets, they come with a holder. But the good thing about the holder is it's weighted. So it's not going to fall over or roll away. But the good thing about it is, if this is going to show up in the screen, it's going to keep tracking my face there is more pen tips in there. So as soon as you run out of pen tips, there is another one to go in and they're quite easily changed as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully it didn't drag on too much because it's usually image editing or photography based, but I do enjoy my technical ones as well. And I'm, although that's a product, I think it's more the technical side of it. I enjoy sitting watching videos on how people set up their equipment and for example, their lighting, their cameras, their microphones. That, that for me, I enjoy learning new things. We're always learning. So hopefully that's helped somehow just showing you my configurations for it. Uh, there's a couple more videos like this coming up. You may in the background see the blue light just about there. That's from a company named Illuminate and I'll put a link to them below. But I'm going to do a video and then we're going to do light painting with these. These are phenomenal. As a photographer, I've really enjoyed these and they're not just for light painting. I've really enjoyed using these tubular lights. So I'm going to do a video on them as well. So... If you've stuck around this long, thank you very much. Hopefully you found the video helpful. If you're new to the channel and would like to check out some more videos, and as I do say, they are editing based videos, mainly Luminar, Photoshop in there as well. But if you'd like to check out more, please check them out in the channel below. And if you've enjoyed it and you enjoy them as well, please consider subscribing because that would be greatly appreciated. Remember, stay safe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.